Hello wonderful people, uh, in this video I'm going to show you how to get to our next step in our blog. So this is where we left off in our last video, as you can see we have our dummy uh, dummy uh, posts, and we have our sort by buttons, and our manage blog post, and our login and register buttons. So I think, yes, our login and register buttons do work, but when we uh, are guests and not log in, we also see this managed blog post. So now what we have done here in the place in the uh, final product of this video is when we log in, we can, it automatically goes back to the homepage and the managed blog post button shows up. So if we click on this, we have our little view of managed blog posts and we have 16 posts here, I just posted random posts and we have really short body content. I wasn't trying to make this really uh, readable or like real. Um, I was just trying to um, make something that was uh, practical and show you guys how it's done. And um, and and uh, if I create a add new blog post, I can say uh, this is a new blog post title. And I can say uh, lorem, let's do Lorem. Let's go to Lorem Generator and go Lorem. Or you can just copy this text, it doesn't really matter. Let's go copy this and submit. And we go back here and we see this long text here. And the edit and delete buttons don't work yet, but what we have is a dynamic content loading system and we have the beginnings of a CRUD operating system as well. So if we log out here, I believe it goes back to, yes, it goes back to our home page. So that's what we're going to create in our tutorial. We're going to show, I'm going to show you how to tidy up the code a little bit. Uh, it does require a little bit, a little bit of uh, technique to do dry programming, which is uh, uh, don't repeat yourself programming. Um, and um, let's get right into it. So the first thing we want to do is, of course, go to our editor and have to check what we have to do first here. So I'm just going to move this to the right here. And we have to make this button only appear when the guest is logged, when the user is logged in. So it's no longer a guest. So to do that, we're going to um, go to our home.blade.php page. And let's see home.php page and we have to go to um, here manage blog posts so this portion has to be in an if else statement so I'm going to go if and and if I'm going to uh, copy and paste this inside here like that and let's see what I have to do in the if else statement. So if I go, um, if I go to if else, I'm just looking at the code on my other screen here. Uh, bear with me. Um, vanish. So we have to do is auth check. So we go auth check. So now if we go back to our page and refresh, there it goes, disappeared. That's exactly what we wanted. So we go to user o2gmail.com. So that's what we want to do. Logged in. And we also want this to go back straight to our uh, home page as well. So to do that, we have to go to our uh, controller for the login section. So we go to app, um, HTTP, controllers, auth, and login controller and here we have to go from home to uh, the root so now if we go back and we go log out and back to logging in login we go straight to the home page so that is exactly what we want now we have to create to this link so that it actually goes to so let's see what we have here we go to login manage blog posts and we have to go to um, blogs or admin panel so to do that we want to actually create something what do we want to create we want to create here let's bring this uh, C panel here and by the way I'm going to show you a new um, P 
php artisan command and it's called php artisan root list so i'm going to currently go to the correct folder we're on so i'm going to cd block 2 and if i go php artisan root list it currently goes to let's see it goes so we have um, we have our login and logout and then we have our password reset uh, pages and then we have our register page so that's all we have right now we have to create a block controller for um, we have to create our uh, database connection for our blog posts so I'm going to create a um, post uh, post controller a post model and a post post resources so to do that I'm just going to go see what I did here it was um, post so I did PHP artisan make model and then I have to go post controller migration resource in my previous tutorial I made it into a blog but that was my mistake it should be a post because you want to target what you're actually creating and editing and that's post not blog blog is what contains the post um, so this is my mistake but we're going to basically do this so I'm going to copy this go all the way down here and I'm, I'm copying pasting because I just practiced this tutorial um, uh, a little while ago so I'm going to go PHP artisan make model post controller migration resource that's exactly what I want all right so we created our model we created a controller we created our database migration and we created a resource section so that um, the uh, so that the um, routing can be pr uh, properly uh, redirected or actually so we have the proper routing resources which makes coding a lot easier so let's explore our uh, migration so let's go to um, database let's go to database migrations and here we have create post table so if you go here, let's see what we have to actually create. So I'm going to uh, reference my previous page that I worked on. And yes, if you um, work as a programmer, it will involve copy and pasting a lot of code. You won't be memorizing everything unless you've been programming one programming language for quite a while. Um, I actually have not been doing that, as you can noticeably tell. However, it gets easier and easier every single time. This is about my fifth time making a blog application, so these things the, the thought process of what uh, it, the strategy it takes to code something gets easier and easier every single time you do it. So it's all program concepts that's like a puzzle pattern. Every single time you do it, it's e the easier it gets. So we want um, uh, in the table for post, we have the post ID and then we want the uh, integer for the user ID who posts it. So user ID. And then we want table st string for the title. And then we want table text for the body just like that so now let's create and remember how we created the uh, resources tab so if you go to um, our post controller it has our public function public function create public function store sh function show edit and update so it gives you what and destroy it and so it gives you basically what you need for um uh, for uh, CRUD operation and um, if we go back here index is obviously the home page that displays all the information so the min panel uh, min panel home page create is the page that you're going to use to create new posts store is the operation that puts the uh, data into the database into the model show is going to um, show the individual post Edit is going to be the editing page. Update is the page that sends the ed edits up to back to the database and destroys the obviously delete. So that's how the CRUD system works. So there's like six pages to make the CRUD system operate smoothly. And um, 
if you type in the resources in the command line while making a model, this stuff automatically shows up and it makes it super convenient because um, what we can do, I'm going to show you right after I migrate this, what we can do is very, very easy. So first I'm going to uh, do PHP artisan migrate. So PHP artisan migrate. And then what I can do is I can go back um, I can go back to web.php and I'm just going to see what I did. Uh, web PHP. And what we have to do here is we have to go resources. So root. So actually, I'm going to show you right before I type this in. If I go back to our command line and I go PHP artisan root list. I believe we have the exact same thing. Yes, we have the exact same thing show up. But now that we have the foundation laid out, we can go root resource blogs. No wait, posts. And then post controller, which is the controller we just created. If we go back here, we see the post controller here. That's what we created. And if now that we have that, now if we go back here and we go PHP artisan root list. This is what we have. So we have our post index, post store, post create, and this these are the root names. So this is what we'll be referencing. And uh, it's using get method, delete method, put method for the update, get method, and post method, and delete method. So that's, uh, that's going to make our CRUD operating system super easy to program. We can use very, very few lines of pro, uh, programming lines to create the CRUD system. So it makes things exponentially faster to, uh, to create. I think I'm repeating myself here, but you get the point. <laughs> so <laughs> next thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually code the um, a min panel page here. So let's um, let's go back. I'm going to uh, see. So to do this, I'm going to create a templates page. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our template our layouts here, and then I'm going to create a template that we're going to use for uh, for the uh, for our min control min control panel homepage. So I'm going to go um, here and say uh, template dot blade dot php, and I'm going to bring out what I already have. I think at home here. So I'm going to go home, and uh, I want to copy this copy everything here then I'm going to copy and paste and then I'm going to delete all the body area because that's what I'm going to vary and then let's go all the way up here so delete everything delete this delete the style so basically what we're keeping is we're keeping the CDNs which is for jQuery and bootstrap and we're uh, keeping all the metadata so those are the things that we need, and um, we're going to customize the uh, we're going to customize the title here. So let's see how I do that. Um, so basically, what we have to do here is we're going to go not this is the right page uh, template. So let's go to template.blade.php, and inside this layout, we're going to delete this, and we're going to say. at yield title and then we're going to go down and uh, down the bo uh, body body part here we're going to go container and then we're going to um, go at yield content and then we're going to uh, blog we're going to create a new folder. We're going to call it um, a min panel. So we're going to go to our resources, views, resources, and here we're going to create a new directory called um, a min panel. All right, so a min panel. There we have it. And inside here, we're going to create a new file called home.blade.php. I think, I think I'll call it um, index.blade.php. 
you know what? I'm I'm kind of I'm not sure what the correct naming convention is because this is what the home page for the home uh, admin panel is going to be. I think it should be index.php, but Laravel already has a home.blade.php type of folder file, so that's what I'm going to do. Home.blade.php. Am I right? I have no idea, but <laughs> it works. I guess you could specialize in. You can look up what the correct uh, naming conventions are when you start working in group projects, but this is how it's going to be done for now. So here I'm going to um, actually copy the code. Um, we're going to go, it extends layouts.template. All right, so that's exactly what we need. And then if we go here and we just type in something, uh, oops, what I meant to say was, if I go, well, let's let's just type the whole thing out. Let's section title blog admin panel, and then add section content, and then we can do stop. But I'm going to do end section because I just feel like it's more intuitive that way. Or we can use stop, but this is what I'm going to use for now. And then if I type in something random here and if we go back to our page and um, we go click here oh wait we haven't uh, so now, now let's now that we have created a pa created a page let's actually link it in um, our uh, home page our real home page that's home.blade.php so down here where we have um, where was it where we have our manage post button. So for some reason I can't find it right now. <laughs> um, let's see, where was it? It was um, drop down. This is login and register. So that's right. And nav bar. All oh, right, it should be here. Um, nav bar sort post by drop down menu sort. All oh, right, here it is. So manage blog post. So here right here sometimes it's hard to find the code uh, but you can find it when you know what you're looking for so we got href and let's say um, we're going to go root colon colon um, and then it's going to be blog no it's going to be post let's see it's going to be post.index post.index I'm looking at it right here post.index and that's going to have a get method, and um, so it can be a direct link and not a form. And we can it'll go directly to post controller at index. Now we have to go to our post controller. Uh, if I go to our post controller, and if under here under index at the very top, if I go return hello, I go back here, refresh the page, log in, log in, manage blog posts. And syntax error, post controller line 17. Just have to create a semicolon. I'm getting confused with JavaScript here because in JavaScript you don't use semicolons, so <laughs> that's why I'm just confused. But it's PHP, so we gotta use semicolons. So now that we have created that, what we want to do next is um, we want to actually go to that home page we created. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a return blade. So I'm just going to double check that that was what I created. Controller. And what we're going to do is we're going to go return. Instead of hello, we're going to go return. View. A min panel. And home. Now if we go back and refresh the page. It goes to our gibberish that we created. So that's all good. That is all good. All A-OK. -okay. All right. So the next thing we have to do is actually code in something useful. So we go to blog.home.blade.ph. No, it's not blog. It's, um, it is a min panel, home.blade.php. And here, we're going to uh, create something really simple. So we're going to go um, simply h1, the min panel. Should have a welcome message, but it's all right. So a 
button. Actually, we're going to um, create a table. So table, table for bootstrap table uh, styling. Then inside, we're going to create a T head plus uh, with a T H times five. Uh, and then I believe up level was this um, T body T H plus td times four. All right, let's see if that works. Yes, that works. That's exactly what I wanted. So I put an enter there. Let's tap this out, right? So if you know Emmet, it's super fun to write these codes because you feel like you're doing a lot, and that's exactly what you want. You want to code a lot while programming the little, while typing out the little, littlest as possible. So you want to min-max your production value. So we're going to have a post table. And it's going to be your ID, the post title. And by default, it's not only going to show you the posts that the logged in user is going to uh, have created, which are, we're, we're going to program that in um, a bit later. Then we're going to have body, edit, and delete. And here we're going to have. Um, the uh, let's say sample post ID let's title sample content you get that it's content content edit button and delete button now if you go back to this page we have our main panel sample post ID post content edit and delete now we have to actually create the uh, button to add something in here so let's go do that so that for that we're going to put it right here and I'm just going to make a simple link tag and we're gonna go a button button primary pull right and we're going to give it a href we're gonna to go to the create page so it's going to be root blocks.create and here we're going to go add new blog post I'm just going to give it some space here so br times 3 if we go back here whoops blocks. oh right it's not blocks.create it is post.create because I did it correctly this time so it's going to be that all right so if we go to post.create it's basically going to our if we go back to our lo not login controller not this not this but if we go to our uh, post controller it is right here so we're going to um, do a return view here so I'm just checking what I have in my other piece of code So we're going to go create a new file and here we're going to link it. So return view a min panel create. So a min panel create. So we have to create this file here. So we're going to go back to our min panel here and we're going to go file create and we're going to go create dot blade dot php. And because we have our template, it's very easy to um, just copy and paste this this type of code. Uh, we're going to actually uh, do a, I believe it was extends layout, extends layouts. I'm going to take a quick look and see what we have. Um, go to home.blade.php. No, not this one. Go to our this one that oops the folder file just collapsed there all right so there you go we have that open and if we go back to our home it is extends layouts dot template so if we go back to our create here it's extends layouts 
dot template and section title let's copy this it's going to be add new post and section content in section min panel all right h1 and this one's going to be um i believe it was going to be add new post that was simple enough add new post and we're going to create a small form so i'm just going to check what i have and um if i go to our create page we're going to say uh, we're going to give it a cl diff class of cool sm small eight and then cool sm offset of two and here and this is just a standard because the um con the container div is 12 columns wide and that looks a little too wide for our uh for our form so what we're going to do is we're going to create a form here and we're going to give it a uh, form group and two form groups and we're going to create a label for title it's going to say title next line and input Type is going to be text, name is going to be title, and uh, we want a full width, so we're just going to go give it a class of form control. And here we're going to create a uh, another label, so label for body, body, and then we're going to create a text area, text area for the content. And we want to create a name of body and we're also going to give it a class of form control class form control now that we created that let's refresh the page and there you have it now I have to have the button to actually uh, submit this form so let's go button type uh, submit type Submit. I always wondered what the difference between a button with the type submit and an input button that's a submit button. I think it's the same, but I should probably get out in the future. It just doesn't matter right now. So I'm going to do button class, button primary. And then you want a button that goes back to the previous page. So for that, we're going to go click, I mean, a class of button, button default, pull right, so it lines right. And inside we're going to say go back go back and this is going to go to the index the home page so we're going to go root root blocks dot index so this is what we want to create so I'm going to oops refresh the page and blogs.index not defined. I think it was not blog, it was post.index. I keep on missing that. It's going to be posts.index. Refresh the page, and there you have it. If I click here, it goes back to the previous uh, page, and if I click submit, nothing happens yet. So let's actually submit what, um, create what's going to be submitted. To do that, we have to go to our command line, and to store something, it's post.store that's the name of the root and it's going to go to post um, it's going to go to the URL post with the uh, method of post <laughs> that's not intentional the um, similarity in the name and it's going to go to the post controller at store so we have to make the form submit to post.store and we don't have any separate variables here so we're just going to go uh, type that in real fast and we're going to go to go for at form action and then go 
root block store. Oops, not block store. Post store. I believe it was plural. If I go back here, it is plural. That's, yes, it's plural. And then we have to do a cross-site forgery request. Um, a uh, input and go csrf field and this basically checks that the token is not being uh, cookie um, hijacked or anything so it's a security measure and then we're also going to go po method post so if we go to our post controller and if we go to store we can say return hello just to sh make sure this works and I'm going to say sample title. We're going to submit and content of the body is lengthy and goes here. I'm just going to copy and paste this a couple of times. Okay, submit. And it actually did not submit. Let's go back here. Okay, um, we have to refresh the page. So basically, it's saying hello. So if we go back here, um, sample content content we are going to create goes here copy and paste this a couple times submit and we have hello and if we go back here and we say uh, request return or we can say echo request and I believe it was um let's see I'm going to just make sure what I did here if we go request Title and then echo request body and refresh the page. Continue sample title that's the initial content, and then we have the content here that we actually created. So that was uh, so that was really simple. And basically, what we have to do is we have to actually save that and store that in our um, in our database so to do that we first have to create something like this we have to create something like post is equal to new post and that's going to give us an error if we don't um, specify that uh, that it's going to use the post model so to, to actually use the post model we have to go up here and go use app post and that allows us to create a post um, object and um, and work with it using Laravel's Eloquent ORM. So let's go back down here. And we're going to just say, uh, so we got the title, body, and then remember we have to get the user ID. So we have to say, um, let's say post user ID is equal to auth. ID. And in order to use the auth section, we have to go and say use auth. So this allows us to pull the stuff that we need. Like um, request here allows us to use the request function that we're using right now. But the other ones are not included. This one is included with the resources. That's why it's already here. So let's actually... Um, Put this into a uh, variable so let's go post um, post title and here we go post body and that's really simple and we actually want to save this so we have to go and uh, now that we created the post object, we can go post. And remember, we have a table column name. This is recalling the column name. So it's user ID is the column name is equal to post user ID. Post title is equal to post title. And post uh, body is equal to post body. So that's really simple. And then we go post save and then we simply go return redirect and then the root that we want to redirect back to go blocks dot index so this is our this is what I really love about um, 
uh, redirects. If we redirect back to blocks.index, it automatically runs all the code here so that you can have one uh, controller for the index page. This is part of the M model view controller framework uh, benefit, um, MVC style programming benefit. And you can program all the logic for the um, homepage in here once. And each time you visit the homepage, you can just access the code here and you only have to write that code once. And that's what I love about um, redirects because you don't, you don't have to specify that code again. So that's the benefit of using roots. I just wanted to point that out because um, we're going to later create something that utilizes this and allows you to do some dry principles. Don't repeat yourself. So I'm just giving you guys a head up, heads up on um, that's why we are doing that. So now that we have that out of the way, let's go back. And if we refresh this page, it should go back to the home page. So invalid blocks index dot not found. I keep on messing up. It's post dot index post dot index. Now refresh the page and we go back here. So that's what we have. So if we go back to our PHP admin and we go back, go to our uh, blocks two. Um, table and we go to uh, users I believe we go to no we go to posts we have our two posts it we're not checking if we have repeat content I might do uh, re do a authentication uh, system down the road but right now we just want to get the bare bones basic down and we're not uh, worrying about anything uh, to do with um, authentication or repeat or unique unique post content we're just letting it run um, but that is optional. You can look it up on Laravel how to do it and you can add that in right away. It's fairly simple. I'll show you where it is. It's um, Laravel, I think, authentication, no, uh, Laravel authentication unique. I think if we go down here, No, it's not. It's not authenticated. I can't remember what it was. It was um, checking if something is unique. Um, Laravel check if unique. Validation. Sorry, <laughs> what I meant to say was validation rules. So if we go down here, it's very simple to do the validation. I'll go through a sample piece of code. Um, we go this validate request, and then you go the request name, which is title, and then the body, and then required or required unique. That's the um, item you want to check if it's already in the database with the same title name or same body content, and then max or min 20, 255 characters. That's basically what it is. But we're not going to do that right now. We might add that in as a functionality in a future tutorial. But for now, we're just going to um, we're just going to go with this, and then here we're going to a uh, create a. Um, Here we are going to create, let's say, uh, return view admin, home, admin panel home. And in our home here, we're going to actually, we have to uh, return view here, and we have to actually pass on the data of the posts that are in the database. So what we're going to do is, uh, up here in the index area, we're going to go, um, let's see logged in so we have to figure out posts and then we're going to go blog no wait post all where user id where for all the posts that the current user id has posted so the logged in user can only see the posts that the, that he himself has actually uploaded or posted not other people's posts so you can only edit posts that you uploaded so you go to user id where user ID is equal to let's say logged in user ID and we're going to go up here and go logged in user ID and that's going to equal to auth ID and because we said um, post all we're going to uh, return view and we're going to say Posts is equal to posts. So we can use this variable here. I say loop, we're going to use a loop function. So loop 
uh, loop function yet yeah, loop function loop statement so we're going to go to our home.blade.php right here and here instead of this we're going to um, create a row so we're going to do a four for each I think it was for each loop for each and for each for each um, post as post Then we want to say um, post ID post. Whoops, we have to do the um, blade template engine. So we go to post ID post title. And guys, if you have any questions or if I'm if I'm uh, making this too hard or too easy put your questions down in the comment section so I can gauge what people know and what people don't so I can I, I try to I usually try to focus on the more advanced more intermediate level um, programming because that's what I'm interested in uh, in teaching but uh, if you guys have some stuff that you think I'm going over too much that I should slow down and explain please let me know in the comment section and I'll keep that in mind for my for my next uh, tutorial videos all right so uh, just let me know okay so post um, body post whoops not this is going to be the edit button so we're going to say edit button and we're going to add that in a future video maybe part four edit delete button no not delete button so that's what we're going to do and then i'm just going to delete this part since we don't need this anymore and if we go back and refresh the page we have two posts there we go we have two posts sample one sample two create create edit button and delete button so it does look a little messy here but that's all right so um we can always add a new post let's say beach expert sunny day sunny title yay beach was super warm and fun to be around so enjoyable so enjoyable smiley face submit and there you go we have our basic basic crud system so now let's see if we have anything we missed we have to add in our uh, logout button here so let's see what we have um, in our home.blade.php so if we go back to our home blog home.blade.php and we have our drop down logout button here so we have our logout so this is basically the logout button here the one in the end if uh, else statement and we only need this part here so we're going to copy this and we're going to go back to our other home .php. and at the top here let's say um let's say right here we're going to add that in right there and if we refresh the page should be right there okay that's right there so um, I think the CSS is not working right we have to um I think I have to copy this uh, div of class nav and nav and nav bar nav all right so let's do that let's wrap this around in a nav and nav bar nav div and if we copy this oops that was a mistake we copy this and then we paste it inside there refresh the page there you go we have it uh, working properly and we want to do a pull right pull right refresh the page and let's see we want it at the very top so instead um, all right let's see why is this one here so if we go refresh the one on the page we did it correctly it is 
at the very top, okay, is actually above the min panel. So let's um, move this down. And let's see if that works. Refresh the page. Yep, that's how it works. So we can log out, log out, and it goes back to our home page. And let's see if we have anything else that we missed. I think that's it. And there is, so uh, in our other page, there is a token mismatch here. And that's um, why that's happening is basically in Laravel 5.3, the log out functionality became a post functionality. A, po a post method and basically what that what makes what what that makes it happen is that if you log out after the token mismatch after the logout session timer has expired it becomes a token mismatch so that you can't so you can't play around with the cookies or something or ha hack back in so that's why this page is showing up so if you just go back to uh, public it works out and if we log back in log in log out uh, it does it works cleanly as well but if you log out if you press log up button after the timer has run out for the for the cookie session then um, then basically it gives you an error and there is a way to redirect those error pages so that when you're developing for a live site those errors don't show the ugly uh, Laravel um, error pages and show something actually useful for the users however um, I'm not gonna go over that's a little more advanced so we may do that in the future maybe like part six part seven or eight but for now, we're going to leave it as is and not work on that. So now one last thing, I think if we go back to log in, and if we go back, if we try and user one, log in, we should see nothing here. So update password or whatever, manage blog post, we don't see anything. And if we add a new post, this was user one title. 007 agent, here we come, content, all right. Submit, add new post, go back. All right, so if you log out and log back in, and let's say uh, user 02, let's do this again. Manage blog post, we only see the post that we created. Now let's just double check if that's everything. I believe that's everything we have. I believe that was everything we had. So if we go to manage blog posts, manage blog posts, I think that is all. Just double checking. Because I want you guys to have the exact finished product for part four. So that is how we created our um, the beginnings of our blog post system. Uh, we're going to um, continue on with the CRUD operations in our next uh, tutorial, so stay tuned for that. And um, if you guys have any questions, make sure to leave a comment so I know what you're looking for. If the tutorial was great and you think it was awesome, please do leave a like button and please do subscribe because when you subscribe, it does mean a lot and motivates to make me uh, motivates me to make more of these videos. And I know these videos are helping people out, which I love. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial and stay tuned for my next part, I believe part four, I might be wrong. So, um, so stay tuned for our next video and in this series. And, uh, if there's any interesting features that you would die to see in this tutorial, let me know in the comment section below and I will consider adding the features in so I can make this tutorial more interesting for you guys. And also I get the benefit of having more ideas on what kind of tutorials to create because I am doing this as a practice run for a Udemy course that I will be creating as a more advanced course or as a lengthier course, not more advanced because I do need to target beginners as well. But uh, for the most part, I hope you guys enjoyed, enjoyed this tutorial and I will see you guys in my next video. Thanks for watching.